<laughs> we are going to hit the plan. Is there a great time for mommy? Help yourselves, but while the other show is going on, just be a little bit quiet and pop back in as soon as you All right, we've got enough, uh, we've got a, a little bit of entertainment, just a little bit, not too much, uh, in honor of this wonderful occasion. And uh, so that's what we're here for there. And then afterwards, everybody will eat, we'll do gifts, and uh, head over to the bar to see the game play of the American League Division Series. Which doesn't include the end. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, to uh, introduce a very first number, I bring to you a man well respected, well liked, well revered in these halls, Mr. Ted Dixon. one would not have minded hearing something about the Algonquin mission statement. I no. no. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the spouses of the uh, various acts have been uh, asked to introduce. Uh, yes. I'm doing. <laughs> asked. I don't think we were asked. First up, we have the lovely Wendy O'Reilly, the lovely Johnny Schumacher, and the lovely Jeff Paul. <laughs> For those of you who don't know it, uh, are you his spouse? I am. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, there was a brief period of time after the Tracy was diagnosed or whatever it is, is pregnant. That, uh, <laughs> diagnosed? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a disease, man. There was, there was some uncertainty. They knew there would be multiple children. They didn't necessarily know it was twins. They thought, perhaps, just perhaps, it might be a trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Oh, oh my god. This is a disaster right now. <laughs> Silly really. Mrs. Hudson Cooper loves to talk to Mrs. Golden Wasser of her major operation when she had her twins. But when mother comes along, she silences the others. She accomplished something that is very rare in mother. People who disparage marriage burden with the baby carriage front and back.
I'd like to introduce all of you. I feel married to all of you right now. Michael, what are you doing, man? Uh, our next performer is the lovely, the talented Kate Conagieser. Yeah. And uh, please, let's welcome her with a spot of applause, shall we? Just little girls. So fast forward with me some 30 odd later years. <laughs> 30 odd years later, and it's Tracy's birthday. And family and friends are gathered to celebrate the Tracy that is so still so 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 beautiful. And of course her two girls are there, and they are oh, they're amazing. They're such gorgeous and wonderful and successful women. The older of the two by three and a half minutes <laughs> has fallen in her mother's footsteps and uh, has become a star of stage and screen and the airwaves. She got her big break, her big break in her Tony Award winning performance <laughs> in um, a, a, a backstage dramedy uh, called High Jinx and Low and Sue by Tony Sporiello. <laughs> produced by Algonquin Productions, which tells the real life interactions and human drama among a cast, crew, and staff who are producing and performing a musical about group therapy. <laughs> She's also considered to be an absolute shoe in for the Oscars this year in a modern day Cassandra about a high school teacher who uncovers a plot to, um, and, and in the future you will recognize this immediately because it's a very famous story, the high school teacher who uncovers a plot to assassinate um, President Barack Obama at his uh, <laughs> second inaugural speech. <laughs> She uncovers that plot and, and, and she um, is not believed, much like Cassandra, and ends up having to take a bullet for him right there at the speech. It's very dramatic and we're pretty sure that, that Tracy's older daughter, Tracy and Thomas's older daughter. Oh, and I also forgot to, to mention that um, High and Low Jinx and Sue was directed by her dad. Wow. <laughs> and the screenplay for A Modern Day Cassandra was written by Michael Lewis. Oh. Yeah. And the younger daughter has taken a different path. She's gone into politics. Um, she is now Congresswoman, Congresswoman <laughs> Cote, and she has a 90% approval rating in her district, and she is running for senator um, with, with a 25 point spread. So she's pretty much a human, and, and the Democratic Party is grooming her very much to be president, you know, after somewhere in the middle of or after her first term as senator, and it's very exciting for her. And of course, she's working very hard with her, her mentor, former President Barack Obama, and out there <laughs> stumping for her on the stump is also former President Joseph Biden, uh, in, his, in his 90s now, but still going strong, <laughs> still talking, and, uh, and former Presidents Bill and Hillary Clinton. So uh, it's, it's really quite wonderful, and she's very, very just for the moment to show up for Tracy's birthday party. And uh, both of them have inherited Tracy's golden throat, um, which I have not. But <laughs> you're going to pretend that I am her daughters now singing the song that they would sing for her on her birthday some 30 odd years from now. Uh. What do you give to the lady who has given all of her life and love to you. What do you give to the reason you are living? I could window shop the world before I'm Alice. 
diamonds like doorknobs, mountains of gold to Thomas Corday. <laughs> 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 and they're in the 
guys, this is the last, the very last page and a half of the show, and I just, as a playwright. Yeah. <laughs> Were you directed to do that? <gasps> of course not. <laughs> Wait. Do you want me standing? Or? No, you're standing. Oh. Does it say, does it say kneeling? <laughs> Stacy, I don't deserve you, baby. Stop it, Thomas. I hear that enough from my mother. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, look at me. I'm not exactly the best looking guy on the planet. I'm not particularly witty. I'm nearly as smart as you are. And I'm, uh, well, Certainly not going to win any awards for my prowess in the sack. <laughs> I'm not debating any of that. I'm not telling you. I'm just telling you I love you. <coughs> but you are such an amazing woman. I mean, you you have so much more coming to you. Why, you can't name one thing. I can give you that no one else can. Go ahead and try. Oh, Thomas, you give me so much. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the end of my rope. I'm, I'm this close to just taking my own... Wait! Hold on. Blackberry. <laughs> oh, you're right, Thomas Corday. You haven't given me one thing. You've given me two things. That was the doctor. I'm pregnant with twins! Baby, you're the greatest! <laughs>
done. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, but I will say before you leave, make sure you sign the guest book. Uh -huh. It's right here. Make sure you say all your wonderful things that you want to say to Christy and Thomas. Um, I, the, this, this last act um, is coming from my own sweet honey, Michael Lewis, and from Sharon and her own sweet honey, Michael Riley. Um, and you may recognize the tune. It's from a movie about another girl who got pregnant, and there the similarity between Z and that person uh. ends. <laughs> um, so, Michael, Sharon, and Michael. They're back there. They're back there. Oh. <laughs> 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 I like production values, okay. <laughs> Honey, where's the camera? I have it's it. behind you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Couples 
Joni, can I help? Can I help? I'll help Joni. Hey, 